Welcome to Pit Stop Pro version 13, the latest release of our distinguished Pit Stop product line. The following video has been designed to present the new features included within this major release. Pit Stop Pro 13 can now be licensed via a monthly or yearly subscription licensing model. This kind of licensing has become popular since the advent of the Adobe Creative Cloud, and Focus has carried out extensive research amongst its customer base, and as a result of that research, added the option of subscription licensing for Pitstop Pro. All the original licensing models are still available. Subscription licensing is an addition, not a replacement. In early April, Adobe released Acrobat DC, or Document Cloud. In addition to a completely new interface, one of the biggest changes is that on the Macintosh platform, this version of Acrobat is now 64-bit compliant. This means, of course, that all plugins must also be 64-bit in order to work. We did the majority of the development of the Pitstop Pro move to 64-bit within the Pitstop 12 Update 3 release. So both Pitstop Pro 12 Update 3 and Pitstop Pro 13 will work within Adobe Acrobat DC. There are, however, some user interface improvements and new icons in Acrobat DC that are currently in development. These elements will be complete in a future release of Pitstop Pro, but in the meantime, do not affect any of the functionality or usability of the software. These icons will look like puzzle pieces in Pitstop Pro 13, so don't be alarmed if you see them. Missing or not enough bleed is a very common problem faced by anyone trying to print a PDF file. Previous versions of Pitstop Pro were able to extend rectangular vector-based objects in order to create bleed, but did not touch any other page content. With Pitstop Pro 13, we have a completely new approach, and one that works on all page content except for text. Before examining the technical properties, allow me to demonstrate just how easy this action list is to use in real-world situations in which supplied files have arrived with no bleed. While it is possible to perform automated preflight checks for proper bleed box assignment and for adequate object-based bleed, we'll take a moment to manually examine the necessary components for bleed, which will help us to describe how the new and improved action list works, and will also help new users to have a better grasp on what goes into a file with proper bleed configuration. Files need two basic elements for proper bleed. First, a properly defined bleed box. And second, objects that are intended to run to a page edge must be extended past the trim box to the edge of the bleed box. Our first example file immediately shows visual signs of concern since information appears to abut the crop marks. To further validate this concern, if we enable the pit stop page box view, you can see the trim box in dark blue and the bleed box in cyan, but no page data between these two sets of guides. Finally, if we switch to the pit stop wireframe mode, our concern is indeed valid. Not only is there no information in our bleed box area, objects show no signs of any additional information, which may have been hidden or masked and potentially used for bleed. This particular design, as with many, leave little option for production, as enlarging objects to create bleed would produce unwanted results. Historically, this file would be unusable. Production would cease until new files with appropriate bleed arrive. Running the Add Bleed action list quickly and effectively adds both vector and raster bleed to a file which previously had none, and so production resumes. In situations where content is available to generate bleed, Pitstop will detect this and create bleed to fit the size of the bleed box. For this reason, it is important to ensure that a given document has a bleed box present and that it is sized accordingly to provide the required amount of bleed. In other words, information that was masked by the originating application at the time the PDF file was made. You'll see that this file differs from our previous example in that the wireframe mode shows that this file has usable data that is currently masked on the left edge and bottom. This file also contains no bleed on the right edge and at the top. Pitstop will simply reveal these masked areas, exposing the information for bleed. When Pitstop encounters a PDF file with no available bleed, it will now use a mirroring technique to generate sufficient bleed. The newly created mirrored object is kept independent from the original image, but is an exact copy of the original, retaining all attributes such as overprint, ICC profile tagging, and color space, for example. 
These objects can be edited or deleted if necessary. To more clearly illustrate the mirroring technique used by Pitstop to generate bleed, we'll execute the add bleed action list on a file which contains all image color spaces available in a PDF file. It has grayscale, spot color monotone, a duotone, tritone, RGB, CMYK, LAB, a multi-channel image of CMYK, and two spot colors. This page is also missing bleed. After executing the add bleed action list, you can now see I have bleed. And if I now go to the output preview and turn off the black separation, you can see that my generated bleed has the same color separations as my original content. If I turn off the other process colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow, you can see the separations are as you would expect. As with any adjustments made to a supplied file, you'll need to examine the results to ensure that the effect is acceptable and will not compromise the content. Customers have been requesting customizable preflight messages for some time, so we are delighted to be able to deliver it in Pitstop 13. Preflight messages are often seen as too technical, especially when the report is sent to a customer. So now you can write the reports using your own words, terminology, or even language. Configuring customized messages in Pitstop Pro is quite simple. Within a preflight profile, which you'll immediately notice has an improved user interface, all categories and checks are now on the left side in a harmonica interface. We'll enable a check for ink coverage and set this value to 240%, for example. On the right side of this property, notice the pencil icon. When clicked, you'll enter the Customize Report Message Editor, which has two areas of importance. First, the top portion of this window will depict the default message for this check, while the bottom section is where the new Customize message can be inserted. Start by clicking the Show Variables checkbox at the top. Next, copy and paste the default message, including the variables, and paste this into the New Message area. Now, adjust the message. A customized message can work with or without the variables shown in the default message. However, a preflight report will then only show the message as it appears in the new message field without any reference to an entered value. Non-default language messages can be composed outside of Pitstop Pro and pasted into the new message field to expand a report's ability to be displayed in many additional languages. While in the Customize Report Message Editor, you'll notice at the bottom you can see this particular check has multiple messages, which is not unusual, as the amount of possible messages will depend on the configuration of the check itself and also if you have fixes turned on or off. You don't have to change all messages, edit only those messages you want to. All messages are embedded within the Preflight Profile and will remain intact if the Preflight Profile is shared with another Pitstop user. Execute this preflight profile and notice the pit stop navigator. A regular preflight report and an annotated report, all now displaying our customized message. Customized messages are also valid within action lists, so it's now possible to adjust the messages for the many action list items which work similar to and can expand upon preflight checks. Messages can also be customized for action lists following a change as well. Within Pitstop 13, we introduce a big addition to the way that preflight is carried out in Pitstop Pro and server with preflight restrictions. I say addition rather than change as this new functionality is optional, so you only have to enable it if you want to use it. Preflight restrictions are accessible from the administrative settings of a preflight profile and can be managed from this area as well. Working with any number of standard restrictions can quickly get you familiar with the idea of preflight restrictions. For example, a preflight restriction can be based on a page range, allowing an operator to apply different preflight checks to specific sets of pages. This example file needs to be preflighted based on a four color cover, pages one and two, and the remaining pages in black and white. This is achieved now by selecting an appropriate restriction to isolate the first two pages of the document and applying a check. We'll check that the number of separations on pages 1 and 2 are equal to 4. Next, we'll add an additional restriction by clicking the Add Restriction Plus icon 
which isolates all pages with the exception of the first two pages, and will add a check to ensure that these pages are limited to one separation. Although preflight restrictions may not be applicable to all preflight categories, restrictions can be quickly added to all categories by using the Create tab in All Categories button. Areas such as PDFX compliancy or security are two areas which obviously affect an entire document. Returning to the Preflight Restriction Management screen, you can add new restrictions by clicking on the plus icon. The following screen mirrors that of a new action list window because preflight restrictions are in fact based on select action lists. This functionality provides for countless possibilities in preflight restrictions. In a second example, we'll examine a fairly common situation in the packaging environment where a file arrives which includes a variety of technical or structural color separations, which are typically not related to the output requirements of a production file. Using a new preflight restriction, we'll build a selection that will target all colors with the exception of non-print related material and execute a preflight. Notice how the InFocus Navigator now includes a preflight restriction prefix, noting which restrictions were applied to this preflight. The Log Selection Action List has been improved in PitStop 13. In previous versions, this action list would generate a message when something was selected in a PDF file. It works in conjunction with a select action and also allows a user to find message to be used. In PitStop 13, the Log Selection Action List can now be configured to generate a message if something is not selected in a PDF file. So you can now use it to check if required elements are not present. Within PitStop 13, we also announced the release of the Enfocus Customer Experience Program. This is a software analytics tracking mechanism which gathers information only related to the use of PitStop Pro features, no personal data. This will be useful in the future as we review support for various operating systems or decide to improve or discontinue a particular feature. You will be asked to participate when you first launch PitStop 13. You can change this selection at any time by using the menu item. Thank you for watching and enjoy using the new features in our latest release of PitStop Pro version 13.